the first thing I'm going to do is go to EasyBib and create a free sign-up account. When I sign in, I'll automatically be taken to my citations list and I'm going to create a new list for this new project. I'm going to title it and then create it. You can see where that's on the list. You can see over the years, just in this account, how many projects I have. Each time you write a new essay or a new project, you want to start a new citation list. That way, when I click on this, everything I research is going to go directly to the correct folder. Now, I'm going to create a citation. Where am I going to find the citation? Well, I'm going to describe how to make street corn. Let's go over to Google and find a recipe. I'm going to use this recipe. See up here where the URL is? First thing I'm going to do is copy that URL. I'm going back over to EasyBib. I'm going to click Create a Citation. It's a website. And I'm going to paste that URL right there. Click Search. It found it! So I'm going to go Cite. That's going to take me over to some boxes after I click Continue. And it's going to ask me if I want to change anything. I think everything's there. It has the author, it has the title, it has everything. So I'm just going to click Complete the Citation. And look, there it is. A beautiful little citation. I'm going to go ahead and open up a Word document and I'm going to start creating this essay according to the instructions. First thing it says to do is add my name and give it a title and find an image. I am crazy about Pixabay. It is so easy to find images that are completely free, royalty free. I don't have to cite them. I can use them and it's fantastic. So I'm going to type in street corn, see what images I can find. I like this one. I just simply click on it and I go over here and notice that it's, for, it's free for my use. I don't need to cite it or anything. I'm just going to free download it. I'm just going to do a small image. I don't need a great big one. And as soon as it opens over here, I'm going to open it. Look how attractive that looks. I'm just going to copy it, and paste it right on over. Now you see it's way too big, so I'm going to just make it smaller. I just right clicked it and then come down here and make it still appealing. All right, now I'm going to go back over to my research where I just was. i got to go back up here to Times New Roman and 12, and I've got to set my paper to two, point two, two spaces. So now let's go back over to the recipe. Okay, I'm going to just take the ingredients and put them over in the essay for later. So now those ingredients are going to be part of my essay. And I'm going to have it right there. Now, I don't know what you're going to be telling me how to do. You may be telling me how to program something on the computer. However you want to do it, I'm just doing a recipe here for demonstration purposes. You'll be teaching me how to do whatever you want to do, as long as there are three steps. And for this street corn, there are three simple steps. Roast the corn. Mix these ingredients and put it on there. <laughs> it's easy. Okay. And I'm going to do this by grilling the corn, and I don't need to copy and paste this. I can write this in my own words, because I'm the expert here. I was just getting that list of ingredients to use. So I think I'm pretty much done with this entire website. I've got it all cited over here in EasyBib, and now I'm ready to move on. Now back over here in the classroom, I'm going to go through the steps of preparing the essay. And we've got it. We've got everything here. Now we're going to introduce the subject of the essay in sentence one, sentence two. How do I know about this skill? Where did I learn this? Whatever. Try to make this sentence charming. I'm going to try to do that. And then my thesis statement, I'll show you that in a second. Let's go back and just do these first two sentences first. Okay, I've got my two sentences. First sentence, they want me to have a general sentence about what I'm doing. 
to, I'm always a big hit at parties because I bring a large serving platter filled with delightful ears of Mexican street corn. I constantly update my recipe, and today I'm using a sumptuous blend of ingredients from the Food with Feeling website. So now I have cited my source, and I won't be plagiarizing anybody because I gave credit to the source. Now they want me to write the thesis statement. And what does the thesis statement contain? Well, it's going to contain the three steps for this particular recipe. Let me do it, and then I'll come back and show it to you. Here's my thesis statement, and I'm going to underline that so that the instructor can easily see my thesis statement. Creating mouth-watering street corn is, as, is an easy three-step process. A colon means that a list is going to follow, and we have a list of three steps. Step one, prepare the corn by removing the husks. Step two, grill the corn, and finally top the corn with a yummy topping mixture. I don't like that top, top, that's redundant. All right, there we go. Now I'm ready for my next sentences. Let's go back to the assignment. The next three sentences describe the steps. Sentence number four, describe the first step. Step five, sentence five, describe the second step. Six, six describe the final step with an image of the final product. All right, all right, let's do it. Okay, I have the first two steps. First, heat the grill to 400, remove the husks from the corn, and grill on all sides for approximately 12 minutes or until golden. While the corn grills, mix these ingredients together. What piece of punctuation should I put here since I have a list that's going to follow? That's right, a colon. That means a list follows. And I'm going to go ahead and put these ingredients just like this so that they are nice and indented and the reader can easily see the ingredients. I'm not going to move to a new paragraph. I'm just, this is all part of that same paragraph. Now I'm ready for the third step. And this is that final step. Now for the final step, Again, a colon, because a list is going to follow. Remove the corn from the grill, place on a serving platter, and generously top with the mixture. Okay, I need to get a picture. Then sentence seven, what does somebody have to say about your expertise on the subject? Use a quote that you have cited in Easy Bib. Okay, so, and then a concluding statement. Okay. So I'm going to pause, and I'm going to feed this to somebody, and I'm going to ask them for their opinion. So that sentence, my husband says, I've never tasted anything as delicious as Debbie's Mexican street corn. I could eat it all every day. And then I have in quotation, in parenthesis, the interview, and I have, remember, it just looks all like a, tied up like a neat little soldier. We don't have this citation hanging out there anywhere. It's right there all wrapped up at the end of this sentence. Now, I need to go back to Easy Bib, and I need to create a citation for that interview with Jim, don't I? Let's go over there. Now, this is fun. I'm going to create a citation. But look here, y'all. I actually interviewed Jim and asked him his opinion, so it's not a website. Jim, I, did, I called him on the phone. It's not a book. It's not a journal. But look here at this More tab. Look at all the other kinds of citations that I can create. Isn't that fantastic? And that, with Jim, was an interview. So I'm going to click that, and I'm just going to add my information. This was just a personal interview by me. This wasn't for a newspaper or anything else. I'm going to fill in these boxes. I'll be right back. Oh, I gave that little interview a title, Jim's Opinion. Gave it a date. It was by phone. Could have been by email. I could have done it in person or web, whatever. And then I was the interviewer, me, Debbie Hall. But Jim has to go on here, but Jim was the interviewee. So I just click that again and click interviewee and his name. And now I've filled in all my little boxes. That doesn't need to be there. Just trash that. Okay, so now I've got my two and I complete the citation. And look, I have my two little citations for this project. So now what am I going to do with these two citations? 
Well, I'm going to do the final process with my little two citations. I'm going to export all. This is so important. Export all. Always as a Word document. Because if it does anything else, it will always mess it up. And I do mean always. I go through this every time. So I'm going to open up. It showed up in my little tray down here. I'm going to open it up. And there it is. Isn't that fantastic? Enable editing. And I'm just going to take this. I'm going to copy this exactly like this. I'm going back over to my little essay that I was creating. And I wrote the last sentence. I find these ingredients delicious and provide the corn with the authentic taste of Mexico. And now where I just copied that work cited, paste it, and there it is. Now, what's wrong with this picture? First, I'm missing a picture. I need to add that picture of people enjoying this street corn. So I'm going to go back to Pixabay. I'm going to find an image. I'll be right back. Okay, so I found a picture on Pixabay, and I uploaded it. And you can see it's way too big. And so I'm going to make it smaller. And then I'm going to click up here and click Picture Format. And... I'm going to decide where it goes in the essay so it'll be formatted in there. It won't look like this messy thing. So format, where's the position? Okay, and I'm going to put it at the bottom there. So I slide it up here and there we go. Okay, as you can see, it's just messy as it can be. These fonts are off. This went out and went away from from double space. So I have to go back over here and go ahead and do double space on that. So that part will be correct. This is way wrong because this is not in the correct font. So we need to go over here with a 12 point font. That'll work on that. Okay. I don't know why that's doing that. Okay, I'm going to go back up here. And I'll have to fix the title in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and go to editing. I'm going to go to hit to select all, and I'm going to fix the font issue. Times New Roman, the whole thing needs to be Times New Roman 12. I'm going to go ahead and justify the margins and make those look pretty. And that's going to throw everything off here, but that's okay. I'm going to just go up here, center that, center this, find my fun little font that I found that I thought was fun festive. Make that anything I want. Okay. Good. Now I have to proofread it. Okay. Okay, that's kind of neat the way that happened. And then work cited is wrong. So we're going to come down here. This needs to be centered. Okay. That's good. Now let's proofread this together. You proofread it with me. First, before I do anything else, I'm going to go down here to the bottom. See where the word count is? Go up here and put that word count in because I always forget. I'm telling you this is the biggest thing in my life is always forgetting the word count. So I'm going to do that, take this off, and it's now that's ready. I don't have to think about that anymore. Okay. All right. I'm always a big hit at parties because I bring a large serving platter filled with delightful ears of Mexican sweet corn. I constantly update my recipe. Today I'm using a sumptuous blend of ingredients from the Food with Feeling website. Creating mouth-watering sweet corn is an easy three-step process. Colon. Prepare the corn by removing the husks. Grill the corn and crown with the yummy top topping mixture. First, heat the grill to 400, remove the husks from the corn, and grill on all sides for approximately 12 minutes until golden. While the corn grills mix these ingredients together, four ears of corn, those are all consistent with our, right? That's consistent. It's Times New Roman. Okay. That, this, this. Now for the final step. And that's not a new paragraph, so I'm going to move that back to the margin. Okay. Ugh. I'll fix that. I'll be right back. Formatting. Ugh. Now for the final step. 
remove the corn from the grill, place on a serving platter, and generously top with the mixture. My husband says I've never tasted anything as delicious as Debbie's Mexican sweet corn. I could eat it every day. Jim interview. And make sure that that's all tied up there. I find these ingredients delicious and provide the corn with the authentic taste of Mexico. This is way too far down. Bring that back up. All right. Looks good. Looks really nice. I've got the word count there. I'll put the English course that I'm in. Nice. Now, if I got excited and I wanted to, I could go back up here, picture format, and I could put a nice little frame around it like I do. Well, that doesn't make it pop. Anyway, you could play around with different frames on Word and pick a frame that looks nice. That kind of looks nice. Come down here. If I do it with one, I need to do the same thing with every single image so that we have consistency. I think that was the one, right? All right. Oh, nice. Look how nice that looks. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to save this as a PDF. I'll save it as a Word also but I'm going to save it to my desktop as a PDF. You all look how pretty this looks. Remember I indented my paragraph. It all looks sharp. Got my little citations there. I'm kind of proud of that. And now I'm ready to uh, look this over one last time and then submit it by clicking on the Submit Here tab and I've got my project completed. That concludes this tutorial on how to write a process essay.